So today, what we're going to do is we're going to go through a rite of passage. Most people in Ontario, when we get older, we end up try we end up owning a vehicle, right? Depending on where you are. If you're owning, if you're in a city, you have the option to not have a vehicle, but you may have to actually buy one at some point. Okay. Now, buying a car vehicle is very expensive, right? And furthermore, right, the car depreciates. When you hear the term depreciates, it means that our car loses value. In essence, it loses value and eventually becomes worthless over time. This makes the buying of a car a bad financial investment. It is a bad financial investment, okay? Now, this is different from purchasing property, which also is very expensive, right? But usually appreciates. Now, when you hear the term appreciates, we're talking about the value of something growing, okay? All right, so if you ever hear me say the word appreciates, we're talking about the value of something growing in value. And if something grows in value, the most important thing is that we can take that stuff and sell it for more money in the future, right? This is one of the reasons why we sometimes buy stocks. We have an idea that something is not worth much right now, but in the future, when people really want that stock or want that thing, that they will pay a good amount of money for it, all right? Now, when you hear of dealerships, right? Dealerships are just car, are basically places where cars are being sold, right? And these dealerships often offer low interest or no interest loans to finance a car. When you hear financing a car, it means you don't have the money to pay for the entire car, but someone else has the money and someone's going to loan you that money to buy the car outright and then you pay that person back. And that is what financing is. And the most, most people, when they get finances for their car, they get finances or loans from the bank or loans from a loan company to pay for their car, or sometimes even the dealership to pay for their car. These no interest loans are sometimes not really low interest, okay? Because the dealer offers a better price of the car if it's purchased with cash, i.e. it's not financed. So if you come in there with the entire amount of money for the car, you pay a lot less than if you finance the loan for the car right? Either way, the new car market is very, very, very competitive. Okay. And the dealership doesn't make a lot of money on the sale of these new cars. And as a result, there's a lot of room to negotiate significantly better prices. Okay. So dealerships often make their money off the service they hope to get from you after buying the car. So when you pay for that car, they're hoping that you come back to the dealership to pay for the brake maintenance, to pay for the oil change, to pay for changing the wipers on your car, to pay for changing the tires on your car and storing them for the winter, right? They're hoping that you do that. Now, owning a new car is very nice, right? It's very convenient and a luxury and luxurious. However, you got to remember it's very expensive. It's a very expensive way of obtaining a car. Okay. So let's go over some examples of how all of this finance stuff that we talked about a while ago will allow us to calculate things like the amount of payments that we'd have to pay if I knew a certain value of the car or how much I paid for the car over X number of months. We need to be able to do that. And I'm gonna give you the tools for that. So here we go. Let's talk about our first example, okay? 
So imagine that you have a local dealership, right? That's selling a car for $20,000, okay? $20,000 is a quite significant amount of money, okay? Now, just remember, you may not have $20,000 total to pay for this vehicle. So we might have to get a thing called financing, okay? Now, the dealer offers 3.25% annual interest compounded monthly, okay? Now, on your sheets, you're going to see a link right here, somewhere here, to be able to get to your TVM calculator, okay? Now, when you get to your TVM calculator, you're going to see something that looks like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the TVM calculator to calculate the payments that we have for using monthly interest, right? And we have to figure out the amount of periods that this thing goes for, right? So in this case, you remember, you got $2,000, okay, saved for a down payment, and you're going to finance the rest of this, okay? So we need to figure out what our monthly payment is, all right? In order to figure out the monthly payment, we have a few things to figure out, okay? Now... You remember from before, we talked about PST and GST, all right? Now, when we did, when I was using the textbook for this, we originally had a 14% interest rate. Sorry, a 14% tax for interest rate. So we have to take a moment and we have to calculate the price of tax, okay? So let me just pause that and show you how to do that. And the price plus the tax is just 20000 times 1.14. Now the 1.14 says take the original price and the tax and put them together. And what you end up with is this final answer, which is $22,800. And so now we have to think about the loan. Now remember, we just calculated that we, that we would owe $22,800 for this car, right? Now, you have $2,000. So we need to figure out how much we need to borrow in order to get this car outright. So let's do that. And now you're just going to take 22,800 and you're going to subtract the $2,000 that you have as you're actually taking that off the total amount. And you end up with 22,200. Nope. $20,800 owing, and that is what our loan amount's going to be. In order to use your TVM calculator, you're going to have to fill out the following. You're going to have to recognize that this thing here, this loan amount is our present value. And we're going to take that number and we're going to put it into our TVM calculator. 20,000, 20,800. And we need to put our rate in, which we found to be 3.25%. So we're going to put our rate to be 3.25. We notice that the annual interest rate is compounded monthly. So this is already done. Those are all good. So the next thing that we have to do is we can use our TVM calculator to figure out the payments. And in order to figure out the payments, we have to think about what the periods is, right? Now, we said that this thing is going to be over four years. So I want you to think of it this way. The periods is basically four years. And because it's monthly, it's times 12, which gives us a total of 48 months. So we're going to put 48 in this part. And then in order to figure out the payments, all we have to do now is click this button. Now, once we click that button, we end up with a payment of $400,000. Okay. 
and $62.70. Okay? And you would think that this is a good deal. So every month you're going to pay $462.70. Let's do some quick analysis to see how much we actually paid and then how much interest we saved or paid out. So here's some analysis that we're going to do. So think about it this way. The total paid money is going to be literally $2,000 plus 462.78, and we're going to pay that 48 times. So we ended up paying $24,209.60. Now, what's interesting is how much interest we actually paid. So let's take a moment and think about how we do that, okay? When we calculate the total interest, we have to subtract the total that we paid out minus the original price. Now, our original price was this amount of money here. That was the price plus the tax, right? And then this amount of money here is how much money we paid out to the loan company. And we end up with 24,209.60 minus 22,800, which gives us a total interest paid out as 1,000. $409.60 interest. And that is the interest. So this is kind of like the cost of what we, what you're paying for if you don't pay it outright. Okay? All right. Let's go and talk about the next way to own a car. The first way we paid by financing, okay? The second way of buying a car is to do the following. What we're gonna do is we're gonna lease a vehicle, okay? Now, when we talk about leasing vehicles, what we're talking about is actually renting a car, okay? And when you're renting this car, you're renting it for a set period of time. You drive the car, but you don't own it. When the lease is over, you're going to have to give the car back. However, there are options to buy the car at the end. So your rental free, your rental fee includes the depreciation. Remember, that's the lowering value of the car as it continues. Okay. So for example, if the car depreciates by $10,000 over the lease, then you, what you're going to do is you're going to end up paying for that vehicle at the end, okay? All right, now, the interest charged on borrowing, on borrowing the residual value of the vehicle, i.e., if the value of the vehicle is worth 15,000 when you buy it, right? When you give it, when, sorry, when you give it back, then you pay the interest on the loan. That's all it is. Okay, in the long run, continually leasing vehicles is definitely more expensive than continually buying and selling new cars and significantly more expensive than buying a new car and owning it until it dies. It seems cheap, right? Because you kind of think that you're paying smaller monthly payments for the car, but the monthly payment never stops and you don't own anything at the end. Just think of it that way. The advantage to this is that you're going to be in a new car for a specific amount of time and you don't have to deal with the hassles of selling or repairing that older car. Okay? Let's go and take a look at example two. Now, example two says to lease a car that's selling for $20,000. The customer agrees to pay two thousand dollars so right now if you think about it the total cost 
cost to you is going to be two thousand dollars so far so that's what we got there we got our two thousand dollars down payment for the car and then you have to make 48 payments of three hundred dollars and what we're going to do is we're going to add 48 payments and then we're going to times it by 300 and you end up with this final answer sixteen thousand four hundred dollars now our biggest question is how does that sixteen thousand four hundred relate to what we did before so you remember it cost you sixteen thousand four hundred for this car right to borrow this car over four years which is 48 months right but remember when we take a look at the previous value of the car when you pay it outright you end up paying twenty four thousand two hundred and nine dollars for that car so it's cheaper over the four years but at the end you you don't own the car and that's what happens with leasing but when you pay the car outright by doing these payment plans over time, you own the car at the end, right? So that's just the that's just the essence of renting or leasing a vehicle, okay? And in some countries, when you lease a vehicle, what they do is instead of charging you three hundred dollars, they may charge you five hundred dollars a month. But at which point you don't have to go and pay for any maintenance on the vehicle. That's actually done in a place like Dubai. Something like that would never be done in North America. One of the things that you need to understand is when you have a used car, right? You're going to notice that a used car costs much less than purchasing or leasing a new model of the same car. Okay. Used cars, though, if you think about it, they can be a hassle as because they're older, these vehicles require repairs and maintenance. However, even those costs included, even with all those costs included, this is definitely the cheapest option so far. When you talk about dealerships, dealerships sell the used cars. The margins, the margins, i.e. the amount of money that they make, is often larger is often larger than the margins on new cars. So car dealerships who are used car dealerships tend to make a lot of money on these things, okay? So there's usually a lot more room to negotiate a better price, okay? Dealerships need those larger margins on used cars because it's less likely that they're gonna make money off of the servicing of the vehicle. So when you buy a used car you don't tend to go back to the dealership to get your car serviced you tend to go to other mechanics repair shops to get your car serviced okay now let's continue here okay just understand that used car loans in this case have a shorter payback period right and that's usually because the shorter payback happens because the loan is smaller and a lot of times you end up paying it a lot quicker okay and sometimes you end up paying a little bit more than what you would pay for at least for that vehicle over time now let me give you a history of a thing called the pst gst and hst all right now you'll notice that in this textbook we use for taxes on most things 14% and that occurred because years ago we had this thing called the PST which was 8% 8% tax for provincial and 6% GST right for the general services tax also known as the goods and services tax okay now, when we're talking about buying a vehicle, vehicles purchased way back when were not subject to the GST. So in essence, you paid 
8% tax on your car. You only paid the provincial tax. And that's what you would pay for if you were buying a used vehicle. But if you bought a new vehicle, you had to pay HST and GST on your vehicle, which totaled to 14% at the time. Now, nowadays, the harmonized sale tax replaces both of those taxes. And any sales that we have on any used vehicles must have PST and GST, i.e. the 13% that we spent, that we have to pay on everything from our, what was it, from candy bars to cars, okay? So when you buy a vehicle, right, it's the buyer that pays the tax, right? You are not actually paying the tax to the seller. They keep that money that you get, that they pay, that you pay for the taxes on that on that vehicle and hold it and then pay it out to the government at the end of the fiscal year, okay? The amount is based on the purchase price or the wholesale price, i.e. what we call the black book value, whichever is greater. So when we go and do this math, maybe you go and get a massive deal on your vehicle, but your massive deal puts it below the black book price. So we have to go with the higher, we have to go up with the higher price of the two, okay? So when you hear the term appraisals, right? If you have a car that's 20 years or older, you need to get an appraisal, okay? Appraisals help us decide what the what the cost of a vehicle is. And if there's any issues with the vehicle, you can take that back to the person who's selling the vehicle and try to get a cheaper value of that vehicle, right? Just pay a little less. Now, let's go and talk about third example three. For example three, okay? Ferd is selling his old car, all right? And his old car which is excellent condition. He's going to sell for $6,800. And they also say that the market value of the vehicle is $5,000. Okay. So he's hoping to make a little bit of money on this. Now, remember what we told you for the PST, we know that it is this. And the reason why we need the PST and this other thing called the HST is because we know that's what we pay on our cars today. Now, this problem here says determine the total amount of the car with taxes, okay? So in order to figure out the taxes, what we're going to do is we're going to so the total is going to equal, well, $6,800. And, and we're going to times that by 1.0. 0.08 and the 0 0.8 comes from the 8% which gives us a total of $7,344. So that's what our total is. Now if we were trying to figure out what the cost of this is today we're going to say that our total is going to equal 6,800 and we're going to times it by 1.13. The 0.13 comes from the 13%. Now in order to figure out the last thing here for B, it says find the monthly payment to borrow $7,000 to pay for the car. So imagine if I borrowed 7,000 bucks, right? I'm gonna use my TVM solver. And when we use a TVM solver, you can go and find that on the website. There will always be a link to it. There'll also be a link to this in your online document for this lesson and what you're going to have to recognize is that the seven thousand dollars is the present value so we're just going to put that in and then we're going to compound this monthly for two years now two years is two times 12 which is 24 compounding periods and our interest rate is 7.5 percent and in order to get the payment, all we have to do now is we have to click on this button here.
and we end up with a payment of $315. Now, the interest, let me show you how to calculate the interest. The interest is this. You got to remember that the payments times the number of months is always going to be more than the original amount. So we're going to go 315 times 24, and then we're going to subtract the original amount of money, which ends up being 7560 minus 7000, which means that the total interest paid on this loan is going to be $510. No, $560. And that is the interest that we paid on the loan. Now, you're going to be working on these questions that I've posted below here. Okay. Remember, for question 1D, you're going to use the 14% tax. Okay. Do of these questions, right, I want you to do six of them. Okay, now spread your work out between two, three, four, and six and nine. So if you don't do all, do one of two, maybe one of three, one of four, then five and six, then five and five AC, and then number six and nine. Do that and just don't, don't be, don't worry too much about doing all of the questions. Okay, have a good day.